Now, Marvin, you know some history that a lot of people, especially black people, aren't aware of. Tell me about it. When I began researching the history between black Americans and the Republican Party, it plays out like a drama. Because the Republican Party was founded as an abolitionist movement. That took place in Ripon, Wisconsin in 1854. There was a group of abolitionists who met to resist the spread of slavery to the Western territories. First Republican platform that was written said that we believe that slavery is a violation of the rights of man. The Republican senators and congressmen were the ones who were responsible for passing the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th amendments of the Constitution. And those amendments gave former slaves voting rights, citizenship, and due process of law. And so it was the Republicans, not the Democrats in Congress, who passed that legislation, which was essentially the advent of the civil rights uh, movement. The African-American support of Republicans was strong all the way up until the 1930s. Then there were three major moments that called the black vote to precipitately move from the Republican Party to the Democratic Party. The first was with the New Deal and President Roosevelt. Now, mind you, Franklin Roosevelt didn't have any designs on including African Americans as he came up with the ideas to combat the Great Depression. However, um, Eleanor Roosevelt was a genuine humanitarian, and she was the one that encouraged President Franklin Roosevelt to create the Black Cabinet that featured stellar African Americans such as Mary McLeod Bethune and poet Frank Horn. That type of attention hadn't been given to the black community since the days of the radical Republicans during Reconstruction in the 1870s and Abraham Lincoln. Then the second phase was in the late 1940s with um, President Truman. President Truman desegregated the military. That made the black people who fought in World War II, the Korean War, when they came back, they were eligible for the GI Bill and other military benefits. And that created a small but substantial black middle class. And President Truman was very radical. I, I give him a lot of credit for having steel in his spine because at that time, the Democratic Party was still the party of Jim Crow, the party that created Jim Crow, the party that created the Ku Klux Klan. He essentially changed the party of Jim Crow to the party of civil rights almost overnight at the 1948 Democratic Convention. Republican President Dwight Eisenhower passed a Civil Rights Act in 1957. Now, CL, check this out. The Civil Rights Act of 1957 had the provisions that Lyndon Johnson's legislation had in 1964-1965, desegregating public um, facilities and the like. The 57 Civil Rights Package that was championed by Eisenhower was filibustered, watered down, and pretty much had its teeth taken out of it in the by, Senate. By who? Whenever I check congressional records, two of the senators who were foes of Eisenhower was Senator Lyndon Johnson of Texas and Senator John F. Kennedy of Massachusetts. Almost 10 years later, in 1965, Lyndon Johnson passes essentially the same legislation. He leans on Republican support in the House and the Senate to get it passed. And if it wasn't for Republican Senator Everett Dirksen of Illinois, a Democratic filibuster against the 64 Civil Rights Act uh, would have killed the legislation. So if it wasn't for a Republican Senator from Illinois, we would not have had the 1964 Civil Rights Act the Republicans in the House and the Senate voted for the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1965 Voting Rights Act at higher percentages than the Democrats in the House and in the Senate. Everything you're saying, as you said, you can have your own opinions, but you can't create your own facts. That is correct. African Americans are the only demographic in America who averages a 90% and above voting yield for one party which happens to be the Democratic Party. So what do those numbers do? That is a monolithic imbalance. So that puts black Americans, the black electorate, in an unenviable position of being taken for granted by one party and ignored by the other. And neither is optimal. And the only way to change that dynamic 
is to become unpredictable again. Right. To stop looking at the party label right. and start looking at the leadership of the messenger, looking at the effectiveness behind the message. Focus more on the person and not the party. 